So last month at the RNC convention, I felt like Trump supporters reached their weirdest, most cultiest form yet with the ear bandages that we all saw. But they've managed to surprise me once again by seemingly doing something that's even more weird than that. So I briefly log on to Twitter over the weekend and I see this picture of this man holding a specimen container with J.D. Vance's face on it that reads, J.D. Vance Full Family Kit. Yeah. Now, my immediate thought was, this guy is a disgusting weirdo. Why would he do this? But then I stumbled across another picture of this woman on a mobility scooter proudly boasting the same specimen container. And it wasn't long until I realized, oh, okay, this is just a thing that they're doing because multiple pictures started to pop up of people with the same specimen container in photographs, and I'm not sure where these pictures came from, but somebody opened one, and I don't know who took this picture, but there is indeed a substance in it. Now, it's not confirmed what that substance is, but you know, it looks like what you would expect to find in a sterile sample container like this. So at this point, you know, I'm sure there's multiple questions going through your head. First, why? Why are they doing this? Why do these pictures exist? Uh, another question is, is this even real? Because while it's believable to think that Trump supporters would do something like this, since they've previously literally sported diapers in solidarity with Trump, who is rumored to be wearing adult depends. I mean, a fake J.D. Vance specimen sample is orders of magnitude weirder than everything they've done in the past. Now, my initial assumption was that a liberal was trolling them and somehow got them to take pictures with the specimen cup without them seeing the label, maybe. Uh, and they were told it was liberal liberal tears. I genuinely don't know. That might be a stretch. I mean, if somebody handed me a specimen cup and said, hey, do you want to take a photograph? I would say, uh, no, thank you. That's that's very bizarre. But, you know, it doesn't make sense as to why they would do this uh, if they were pranked or why they would do this on their own volition if there was a merch booth that was selling these. It defies all logical explanations. But even if we can assume that they were doing this on their own accord. The question is why? What point are they trying to make? And the Daily Dot reports, reporting from TMZ claims that the cups are intended to mock Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, who recently revealed that he and his wife used fertility treatments like IVF to have their children, highlighting Vance's natural potency. Okay. Well, I'll admit, I didn't think of that one. But I mean... Look, if you're trying to mock somebody, the goal, I'm assuming, is to not look more ridiculous than the person you're trying to mock, right? But again, we're not necessarily dealing with the brightest bulbs here. Having said that, though, something about this is still a little bit off to me. So far, there's no evidence that the images were AI generated or photoshopped or fake, but the origin is a little bit suspicious. As journalist Elise Thomas points out, the earliest posts I found came from an account with what appears to be an AI generated profile pic. The account was created November 23rd, has been dormant for months, woke up three days ago. She continues, immediately tweeted 100 plus times in support of the Democrats, and then posted this thing about the sperm cups. Now, on top of that, she adds that nobody's been able to independently verify or corroborate the existence of said jizz cups in question so all we've got right now are these images with a pretty suspicious origin but the images themselves seem to be legitimate so when it comes to why they were holding these cups and the validity of them having this as merch we genuinely don't know at this point i would say it's inconclusive but if I had to guess, I'd say my initial suspicion of this being maybe a prank seems to be the most likely. I think maybe a liberal was trolling them. But again, nobody knows. And if there's an updated explanation, I'll post it in the pinned comment down below. But I mean, after the diapers and the ear bandages and Trump Jr. literally sharing this image implying that Tim Walls is into bestiality, you know, it's not necessarily a shocking devolution to see Trump supporters sport J.D. Vance jizz cups. I mean, Occam's razor, right? But putting aside the jizz cups for now, which is a sentence I never thought that I'd be saying on this program, there's no shortage of stories that prove how weird and unhinged Republicans are. For example, Example, Trump tweeted out a bunch of AI generated images of Swifties for Trump with one image of Taylor Swift as Uncle Sam saying Taylor wants you to vote for Donald Trump. And he added, except I mean, he might actually think that Taylor Swift endorsed him and not know that that's AI because it's Donald Trump. He's older and AI tends to trick 
older generations, especially on platforms like Facebook, although he shared it on uh, on Truth Social. So I don't know if he thinks that Taylor Swift endorsed him, but um, she did not endorse him. But to share that uh, is very bizarre. And somebody should have said, hey, Mr. President, uh, she didn't endorse you. And you kind of look pathetic posting that. But that's not all, because he also tweeted out a parody of an Alanis Morissette song where the singer accuses Kamala Harris of election theft, not being black, calls her a communist and implies that she's performed oral sex for political power. Yeah. Now, it references Willie Brown, who has now threatened to sue Trump since he's been brought up multiple times by him. And this all stems from the lie that Kamala Harris was a power hungry home wrecker who broke up then mayor of San Francisco, Willie Brown's marriage. But that's not what happened at all. That's revisionist history. He was separated from his wife at the time that they dated. So she did nothing wrong, even if she did break up their marriage, which she didn't. But even if she did, that's not her fault. That's on him. So I don't know why she would be blamed for this. But the claim is that she slept her way to the top, which is the oldest sexist trope ever. But one way that they're trying to uh, you know, discredit her is by saying she's this sexual deviant who slept her way to the top. And they're also you know, uh, doing this in multiple ways, right? It's both explicit and implicit. For example, J.D. Vance compared uh, Kamala Harris to somebody who he, of all people, should not be invoking. Giving Kamala Harris control over inflation policy, Shannon, it's like giving Jeffrey Epstein control over human trafficking policy. Well, that's ironic, isn't it? I wonder if he's ever asked rapist Donald Trump, who's been accused of sexual misconduct by dozens of women, literally, about his longtime association with Jeffrey Epstein. Because if you're going to invoke Epstein, it should be when talking about Donald Trump, not Kamala Harris. But I mean, this is the kind of shameless gutter politics that we've been dealing with ever since Trump rose to prominence. They will do everything to smear her and claim that she's a sexual deviant, even if it makes them look foolish, even if it brings up something that is a sore subject for Donald Trump, right? And now, because of the Trump era, the most disgusting political attacks against opponents have become completely normalized. They always happened, like politics got really ugly in the United States, obviously. I'm not trying to make it seem like everybody held hands and sing, you know, sung kumbaya, but it wasn't normal to see this. It was out of the norm. But I mean, the Trump era has kicked off this hyper-partisan era where literally every single thing that the other side does, no matter how innocuous it is, is supposedly the worst thing ever. For example, Tim Walls shared this interaction that he had with Kamala Harris on Twitter, and right-wingers lost their minds. Like, I have white guy tacos, and what like that black- What does that mean, like mayonnaise and tuna? What are you doing? Pretty much ground beef and cheese. That's and, okay. Do yeah. you put any flavor in it? Uh, no. Oh. Um, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, they said to be careful and let her know this, that black pepper is the top of the spice level in Minnesota, you know. I'm the first vice president, I believe, who has ever grown chili peppers. I'm well, trying know, to expand I, my, we'll uh, my food knowledge. You know, we've happy, got some cantaloupes. You'll be fine. Yeah. So I found the clip incredibly endearing. It's okay to let loose and joke a little. Politics doesn't have to be so serious all the time. But of course, there was an entire right-wing media cycle dedicated to how outraged they were because of that small interaction that we just watched. A presidential candidate just casually dropped anti-white racism in the middle of what was supposed to be a light-hearted video. You know, Tim Walls says that he makes white guy tacos. And Kamala says, what is that, mayonnaise and tuna? Like, that is anti-white racism. That's what that is. And if you don't believe that, right, if you if you think that it, I'm overstating the case, all right, well, just imagine it the other way. Imagine a black guy says to Donald Trump, I make black guy tacos. And Donald Trump says, oh, what is that, like fried chicken and watermelon? Maybe sprinkle some Kool-Aid powder over top. Am I right? How do you think everybody would react to that? By the way, not racist at all. When, when the black vice president and presidential candidate is talking about the lack of flavor palette for white people because white people have no flavor palette. Apparently, white people hate spices. I mean, apparently, a, a white people, a white people taco is tuna and mayonnaise. That's the, because white people don't like spicy food at all, which is presumably why between the 15th and 17th centuries, multiple European countries fought a series of wars over the spice route and the spice trade because they hate spices so darned much. Oh my God, shut the fuck up. Holy shit. I, get, I can't take it. I can't fucking take it. We're all so goddamn fed up by the performative outrage by right-wing snowflakes who can't shut up about how offended they are by every fucking thing. Just stop. 
holy shit, just stop. And I love how Matt Walsh is like, man, can you imagine how everyone would react if Trump said something racist? Yeah, man, I don't, I don't know what that would look like. You know, he's only been accusing Kamala Harris of lying about being black for the last month, but I can't imagine how everyone else would react if Trump said something racist. I just, I can't take it. You know, I love how the people who pretend to defend comedy and say no one group is off the table are like, no, 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 we draw the line at making jokes about white people if you're black. You've gone too far there. Don't joke about white people. Just stop. Just stop. Holy shit. They don't understand how they're making everybody hate them. You know, aside from being weird, they're just so fucking insufferable. And the reason why Harris is surging right now is because we're all sick and tired of that kind of bullshit right there. And Tim Walls explained perfectly why we're all sick and tired of it at a rally recently. Some of us who have less hair and are old enough can remember when you could go to Thanksgiving watch a Steelers game with your relatives and not complain about politics the whole time, not be on each other's neck. Because you shared a commitment to democracy, a commitment to personal freedoms, a commitment to public education, a commitment to infrastructure. We don't call each other names. We don't do it. And we don't use the leech fortunate amongst us as punchlines for our jokes because they're our neighbors. They're our neighbors. And so you're getting an opportunity to see the best side of America. And for the young people here, they maybe haven't seen a campaign like this because of COVID, because of the things that's happening. This is a chance to bring out that joy, turn the page, and look to the future. This idea of going forward. So. Well said. Listen, I don't think that conservatives realize how many Americans are yearning to go back to the time when politics was just more boring, right? You had scandals from time to time, but it wasn't like this. The intensity was lower, where we didn't have to dread family dinners because we all have that one loudmouth MAGA uncle who passive aggressively shit talks liberals and lefties in the family the entire time, thinks that we can't hear what he's saying, but we all hear what he's saying. I'm not speaking from experience. I mean, Americans are just tired, right? Families have been broken up because of the relatives that have been lost to MAGA, who've gone down these deranged conspiratorial paths, become anti-vaxxers, racist, explicitly so. So, I mean, as time goes on, the efficacy of the Tim Walls's, you know, weird attack has been reinforced. It gets better as time goes on because they're seemingly taking it as a challenge. Oh, you think we're weird? We're going to show you weird. Like, it feels like that's how they're reacting. And I know that initially they were like, we're not weird. And they got really defensive. But now it feels like they're leaning into it almost, which is, I guess, not a good political strategy for them. But it's still very insufferable. You know, very, very insufferable for the rest of us. Conservatives are weird, they're creepy, and they're joyless. And we all just want to go back to the time before the ear bandages and the adult diapers and the semen samples. I mean, I want to go back to the time when the biggest political scandal was Mitt Romney saying that he has binders full of women and not rape, as Donald Trump has been found liable for. It's not like things were perfect back then because conservatives still shit themselves when Obama wore a tan suit. But even then, you know, just taking it down a notch would be welcome, right? Ending the Trump era would be a very welcome change. And that's what voting for Kamala Harris can potentially do. End the Trump era. I mean, he could still run for a fourth time. He'd still be eligible technically if he did lose. But it'd be a lot more difficult for him to make the case for himself if he lost two times in a row. So I want to end the Trump era. I'm sure a lot of Americans do. I'm fucking sick of their bullshit. And I know I'm not alone. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the come zone. Come.